Hello there, I'm back with the third episode of Interstates. Today I'm going to be covering Interstate 57, which starts in Chicago and goes to Sykeston, Missouri. The oldest segment of I-57 was roughly a six mile long strip constructed in Kankakee back in 1959. There's not much else in the way of history for this route, that's kind of it, so let's talk about the route itself. Interstate 57 runs 386 miles between Illinois and Missouri, and like Interstate 72, 57 is primarily an Illinois interstate, only crossing into Missouri for a couple of miles. I-57 starts in downtown Chicago at an exit with I-94 and I-90, which you can take northwest to get to I-39. Immediately after going west, it interchanges with Illinois Route 1. From there it turns south and immediately crosses the Little Calumet River, and approaches an exit with I-294, US Route 6, and I-80. Further south, in Madison, I-57 intersects the Lincoln Highway, also known as US Route 30, and after that, I-57 leaves the Chicago area, still continuing south towards the Kankakee area. After roughly 20 miles, I-57 has an exit in Mantino, followed by one for Bourbonnais and Bradley. Afterward, there is an interchange for Kankakee and an exit for US Route 52. Continuing south from Kankakee, I-57 has an exit with US Route 24 in Gilman. Down the road, it intersects 136 in Rantoul before entering the Champaign-Urbana area. In Champaign, since I-57 never actually goes through Urbana, there is a Cloverleaf exit with Interstate 74, which can either take you to Danville or Bloomington, depending on your direction. Following the exit with 74, there is an exit with I-72 immediately after, which will either take you to downtown Champaign, the end of 72, or to Decatur and eventually Springfield. After about another 30 miles or so, I-57 has an exit with US Route 36 in Tuscola, which will either take you to Decatur or will take you to Indianapolis. Continuing even further southward, I-57 interchanges with Illinois Route 16 and barely misses Route 121 before intersecting US 45 on the south side of Mattoon. I-57 continues even further south, where eventually it has an exit with I-70, and the two become concurrent as they circle around Effingham. The two intersect US Route 40 and US Route 45 in Effingham before I-70 breaks off from St. Louis, and I-57 continues southward to Mount Vernon. But, before I-57 reaches Mount Vernon, it has an exit with US Route 50 in Salem, and you can tell exactly where I-39 would have ended if it had been 100% completed. Now, we have Mount Vernon, where I-57 has an exit with I-64, which can take you to St. Louis, and the two become concurrent as they go through Mount Vernon. On the south side of Vernon, 64 breaks off and heads for Louisville. Yes, Louisville, Kentucky. I-57 keeps going south, where it has exits for Benton, West Frankfurt, there is no East Frankfurt, and Marion. South of Marion, 57 interchanges with its last interstate in Illinois, where it has a one-way exit for I-24, which will take you to Paducah, Kentucky. 57 goes south, where it has an exit with US Route 51, and the two are concurrent until Cairo, which is also the last Illinois exit. 57 crosses the Mississippi River, where it crosses into Missouri. From there, it has an exit with US Route 62 in Charleston. Finally, I-57 comes to a close in Sykeston, Missouri, where it exits with I-55 and continues westward as US Route 60. It is important to note that there have been talks of extending 57 even further into Missouri and eventually into Arkansas, but nothing has been finalized yet. And that about does it for this episode of Interstates. I'll see you next time when I cover... Alright, never mind, it's gonna be a while. <laughs>